Kyle Busch had one of his worst races yet this season in Virginia due to the Cookout 400. His problems started during qualifying where he finished 11th and went on to torture him during the race, where he only managed to cross the line in 16th place. After the race, he went on to blame the sport for his poor results. Before we get into the details on what he said about NASCAR after the Cookout 400, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Ever since the next-gen cars were introduced in 2022, he's not been able to put in strong performances on a consistent basis. He was hoping his fortunes would take a turn for the better when he left Joe Gibbs Racing to join Richard Childress Racing, but things have not gotten better. In the past, he's been critical of the Gen 7 cars. He also feels that his team is not able to get the right setup in these new generation cars. He has said, The problem starts at the front of the car the splitter and the way the air is and everything that we all do on setup stuff to make these things rely on the air as much as they do. That's a problem. I think they went about it and that's a funny way to say it backward. We don't blow the tires off enough. I think that's what we're all kind of talking about. We need these things to be faster going into the corner, utilizing the brakes more, utilizing the tires more, having an opportunity to overdrive the cars more to burn the tires up and see guys struggle more over a run. He believes that the front end of the car is not responding as it should. Since the front end of the car is causing understeer, he's not able to throw the back of the car to get the tires burning while taking on the corners. This problem gets even worse on short tracks, where the corners are tighter and the straights are shorter. Since the tracks do not provide long straights to gain some speed before the corner, it makes it harder to cause a bit of oversteer to get the wheels burning. Before we continue to the rest, let's first understand the concept of oversteer and understeer. The former occurs when there is lower downforce on the back end of the car, which causes the car to drift or spin. In NASCAR, the drivers tend to use a bit of oversteer to slightly drift around the corners in order not to lose momentum. However, if the driver creates too much oversteer, they risk the possibility of spinning their car out of the race. Understeer is when there's a lack of downforce towards the front end of the car. This prevents the car from taking on the corners at high speeds. It also reduces the chance of an oversteer from happening. It's more difficult to turn the car in this scenario. In attempting to do so, the risk of causing extreme oversteer resulting in a spin is higher. When drivers attempt to drift with cars with understeer, the risk of spinning is greater as there will be a very thin line between the right and the wrong amount of oversteer, which might cause a spin. In order to get out of the dirty air, drivers could look to take a different racing line which will give them cleaner air. However, this could also affect the pace of the car, as they will not be taking the fastest line going into and out of the corner. The Cookout 400 was a short circuit race where Bush had a lot of trouble. He only managed to finish in 16th place. After the race, he went on to talk to the media where he was asked for the reason for his poor results. For me anyway, maybe it's just because we don't have it quite figured out like others do but I cannot follow anybody in front of me whatsoever. It doesn't matter if I'm in the bottom lane, the middle lane, or the top lane. If there's a car in front of me, I'm terrible, really bad. I will say the only positive to it is that you can slide the back of the car around a little bit more and not crash, but the front ends are just ungodly not working. As expected, his cornering problems were even worse in Martinsville, but since the corners were tighter, he was able to cause a bit more of an oversteer with minimal risk. He was able to turn the car more when compared to the long circuit races where the turns were wider. However, due to the difficulty in doing so, he was not able to deliver a good result. After this, he was asked what NASCAR could do to fix this issue. To this, he had no hope that the sport would do anything to make the cars better. It doesn't matter because they are not going to do it, so it don't matter. I'm not going to paint myself in a bad spot to get in trouble. The Gen 7 cars were designed to generate more downforce. NASCAR is now aiming to increase the number of street races on the calendar due to the success of the street race in Chicago. In order for the cars to take on these street races, they require more downforce. In doing so, they had to make the car more aerodynamically sensitive. This creates a new problem of turbulent air. Every car that uses a fuel-based engine releases some turbulent air, which is basically the dirty air from the exhaust. This air creates a lot of turbulence to the car behind. This effect may not affect the cars with lower downforce or lower speeds. Since NASCAR is making the car more aerodynamically sensitive, this problem could affect the pace of the cars. For example, if car A is following car B, the latter will produce dirty air, which will be blown on car A. 
As a result, car A will face a lot of vibration and lesser downforce which will make it difficult to control the car. From what Kyle Busch described, it seemed as though he's facing this issue. This problem can be rectified with some setup changes, but the driving style of the driver will also have to change accordingly. This could be challenging for Bush as he has been accustomed to his unique style of driving for decades. Following the race in Martinsville, he went on to talk about the issues with the car. We have had like two hits, I think. So it would be nice to get more on the hit side and where we have good cars and we are able to go out there and contend and compete. A lot of it is just reliance on simulation and what we're being told in that, making decisions based off of that. What makes you faster or better in the sim? That's not transferring to the racetrack. The team is having a hard time translating the pace from the simulator into the car during the races. This could be a bigger problem for the team as it leads to inaccurate data from the sim. While Bush has been struggling with the pace of the car, the engine powering his car, Chevrolet, has seen a lot of success this season. In fact, Hendrick Motorsport secured a 1-2-3 finish with the Chevrolet engines. Bush, on the other hand, is yet to win a race. His best finish came in Atlanta, where he finished third. He was not able to repeat this performance in any of the other races. RCR uses Chevrolet engines for their NASCAR races. This engine has proven to be powerful as they're leading the manufacturer's championship. Hence, Bush's problem lies with the car or his driving style. Whatever it is, he and his crew will need to come up with a solution quickly. Otherwise, Bush's future will be at risk. Bush is currently 38 years old, but will want to race in NASCAR for a few more years. Before the start of the 2024 season, he extended his contract with RCR for one year. This contract is set to expire after this season. If he wants to continue racing in this sport, he will need to start delivering results. Otherwise, none of the teams may consider him to be an asset. In order to start delivering better results, Bush will have to make a change in his driving style to accommodate the Gen 7 cars. It is unlikely that NASCAR will reduce the downforce in these cars. They want the cars to be more agreeable to tight corners to accommodate street circuits. If Bush is not able to deliver consistent performances, this could be the last season of his career. There are still 18 races remaining on the regular season. Bush's sole focus will be on winning a race before the playoffs start, or else he will not be eligible for the fight for the championship. With a lot of drivers and teams performing well with the Chevrolet engine, it's not looking good for the veteran driver till now. Do you think Kyle Busch will be able to turn his season around and qualify for the playoffs? Post your thoughts in the comments section below.